I've got two great guests for you guys. They're the directors of the movie The Swamp on HBO. You have got to check it out. Morgan Pepe and Daniel DeMauro join us now. So I want to dive right in. Morgan, let me start with you. First of all, in the movie, you're following three Republican congressmen, and they are doozies. Matt Gates, you've got Thomas Massey and Ken Buck. Um, they're all very conservative, uh, and they claim that they want to get rid of the swamp. Um, now, I'm progressive. I don't believe them at all. Uh, I've never believed them. I think they're totally full of crap. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that's my bias going in. But I want to believe them. That's the part people might be surprised by. Because at some point, we've got to come together to get money out of politics. Otherwise, this is going to get corrupted forever. So I know this is a tough question because you guys got access to them and and I'm sure develop some sort of relationship with them. But I'm gonna get to the punchline immediately. Are they full of crap or do they actually wanna get money out of politics? Well, Jank, I mean, we are Bernie Sanders supporting progressives. So we were as skeptical as you were. But in fact, what was drawn, what drew us to these members is that they were willing to speak so candidly about the systemic corruption that is at the heart of Congress right now. And we thought maybe this is an opportunity for people across the political spectrum. If we don't come come together on any other issue, at least we can come together on this idea of rooting corruption out of our politics. And I do believe that they are genuine in terms of their own commitment to reforming Congress because it really is terrible serving in Congress when you're in this stranglehold by the corporations and the lobbyists and the big donors. But of course, they don't see the inherent hypocrisy of their support for Donald Trump, who has done more to deepen the swamp than any other president. So uh, the answer to your question, Jack, is it's complicated. <laughs> that's well, you see it in the movie too. All right, so and that's definitely true. So I actually want to show a piece of the movie. Ro Khanna is also in the movie, and and Larry Lessig's in the movie. So this is really interesting. The left and the right could one day potentially come together on this. Let's watch a clip and then I'm gonna come back and and talk to you about more of this. The greatest challenge we face is not Republicans versus Democrats. It's reformers against those who wanna maintain the status quo. And we got Republicans and Democrats in both groups. My view is we need a more progressive vision for America, but a vision is insufficient if you don't get things done. And I do think that there is an appetite among the newer generation of members of Congress to build broad coalitions. And we always have to listen to criticism from the other side and understand that they're representing a particular constituency in America and a particular perspective. We would be sort of an odd couple politically. I am a Tea Party Republican from Florida. Roe served in the Obama administration and represents Silicon Valley. But folks like Roe, even who maybe don't hold my ideology or my view on every subject, understand that this place has to change if we want to do right by the American people. We came here to work for the people who sent us here, not for the leadership, not for committee chairs, and not certainly for the lobbyists. Okay, Daniel, you know, looking at that, that is a super encouraging clip. And I and I and I'm an eternal optimist. I think that we can actually come together from what the mainstream considers the fringes of the right wing and the left wing and, and actually reform the system. But that leads to the obvious question of wait, isn't the problem the thing that the media celebrates so much? The mainstream, the, the people who are actually generally in charge. I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mitch McConnell, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, who are bathed in what I call bribes, what they call campaign contributions. Yes, of course you're right. And you know, as as much as I think we all want to see Donald Trump be leaving the White House in January, you know, Biden wants a return to normalcy, which of course means just the corporations and complete control of the government. Um, uh, I think that's an improvement over Donald Trump. But why we made this movie was to show that there are the contingents in both parties, um, really on the fringes of both parties, because the Republicans we show in the film are uh, do consider themselves more independent members. Now, of course, they are strong supporters of the president, but at the same time, they're trying to work outside 
the leadership structure within Congress. And they, they want to buck their own party and they want to um, be independent and speak honestly and openly about the corruption they see that is very top down from the leadership. And of course, it applies to both parties. So Morgan, that leads, that leads to the next somewhat obvious question. And the reason why I harp on it on the Young Turks all the time. The problem is the media. So I, I, I get it. You know, Trump's a terrible guy. I can't stand him. I think he'd end democracy. I think Matt Gates is a terrible guy on other issues, and and we talk about it. But if they, if Massey says, "Hey, we shouldn't go into war," and Matt Gates says we shouldn't go into war blindly and support Sir on it, great, I'm thrilled. I'm happy to take it. But but the media doesn't point out the number one problem in the country. They're taking bribes. I don't. Am I missing anything, Morgan, or is it really pretty much that simple? It is that simple. And, and as Larry Lessig says in this movie, you know, we can't address any of our other policy concerns for this country until we root out the systemic corruption that has paralyzed our government and made it beholden to the special interests. And a lot of people know about, of course, the the electoral impact that the big money donors and the special interests have. On the system, and, and that's been shown by the great work that you've done with Wolfpack. But what we show people is how corrupt the system is on the inside, and how you can send really bright progressives to Congress, people like Jamal Bowman and Cory Bush. And what happens? They immediately get trapped in a system where they literally have to pay for their committee assignments in order to be able to uh, to serve in the hierarchy of Congress. So polluted. With Corruption on every level, that that is something that is we really wanted to bring to the forefront and show Americans that we need to focus on this issue. So tell us more about that, guys. So uh, what does it mean to pay for your committee assignments? Well, every cycle um, you are given assessments and you need to pay that money to the congressional committees of your party. Um, as we show in the film, we kind of trace the uh, evolution of the modern Congress back to Newt Gingrich's tenure as Speaker of the House, where he really consolidated all of the power within the Speaker's office so the Speaker could control everything. And one of those things that he controlled was committee assignments. So you would think that um, members of Congress get committee assignments based upon maybe their expertise in a field or if they have uh, a certain um, relationship with that uh, private sector industry that that committee is supposed to oversee. But of course, that's that's not the case. It's who could raise the most money. And the only people who are paying those hundreds of thousands of dollars to the members that they need to kick back to the leadership and the congressional committees are the people who have a vested interest in the work product of those committees. So it's an inherently corrupt system. So, so Morgan, Morgan, I feel like the decision that uh, that people have to make these days, uh, and why you see Matt Gates doing what he does, is that you either got to decide, okay, I'm just a corporate tool, uh, I, you know, I'm just a a pawn in this system. I'll take the corporate money and do whatever they tell me to do. But hey, at least I'll have power, money, and fame, or you have to build a name for yourself enough to be able to get small dollar donors to finance your campaigns because everything runs on money. So that's why both AOC and Matt Gates wind up getting so much media attention because it's the only alternative method of raising money other than appeasing and simply flat out working for corporations, which is what all of the rest of the congressmen seem to do. Do I have that right? That's right, and there's there's a hopeful note in that because you can work outside of the traditional power structure. In the old days, you can even go on television unless leadership let you do so. Now you can be like AOC and by raising small dollar donations, she doesn't pay that money for her committee seat. But she has so much leverage and she commands an army of social media followers 
that leadership doesn't dare deny her the seat. But it's how you get those small dollar donations. Are you gonna play the politics of hate, which is what Larry Lessig calls essentially what Matt Gates does, where he says these incendiary things to polarize us, and that's how he gets supporters. Or are you gonna put forward a message that really brings together the country around what is our common enemy, which is the corruption in our system. And I think that there is an opportunity. We see progressive candidates across the country who see that route to power, but we need to put the pressure on the leaders of our own parties to stop perpetrating this corrupt system. And that's why I think the congressmen are speaking directly to the American people. They know they can't fix it inside. They need the American people to pressure them to fix it from the outside. And last thing guys, cuz we're running short on time, but I love this topic. And everybody's gotta watch The Swamp on HBO to see it for yourselves. Cuz they got great access to these Congress people. And it tells a really interesting story. Um, guys, when I ran for Congress, uh, I, I realized that it was actually even worse than I thought. And I thought it was nuclear level bad. Uh, the, <laughs> the only thing, the only thing they care about is the money. But one of the, uh, the results of that is that, uh, it's not that they dislike progressives, Democrat. I'm talking about Democratic leadership now. It's not that they dislike progressives because of ideology. It's I got the sense that they think, oh, these progressives can't raise enough money because they don't, they won't do everything the corporate donors tell them to do, and hence we are disdainful of progressives. What, what do you think about that? I think. I think that's right, and I think part of it is also that the progressives won't listen to the leadership of the Democratic Party and the Democratic leadership. Their main objective is to maintain their majority. They want to expand their majority. They don't want to lose close races in battleground districts. So if the progressives aren't going to listen to them, it makes them look weak, it doesn't make them look unified. And of course, uh, their lifeblood is still the big donors, the corporate lobbyist money. So ultimately, they're doing their bidding. All right, uh, Morgan and Daniel, great work, uh, great movie. Uh, thanks for tackling the topic, we really appreciate it. And thanks for coming on the Young Turks. Thank you, Jack. Thanks for having us. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com slash app.